Welcome to Florence, where we'll be spending just 24 hours exploring this dynamic city. Known for its incredible art and architecture, Florence also boasts vibrant street life, luxurious experiences and a culture that celebrates creativity. From hidden jams to fun-filled corners, Florence offers endless discoveries. So join me as we dive into the sights, sounds and tastes of this remarkable city. So we're here in the Piazza della Repubblica, it's one of the main squares in Florence and we have come to a cafe called Concerto Pazowski. It's a very culturally significant cafe. It actually was made a national monument because since 1846 it's been hosting a huge number of writers and poets and obviously now it's a very like popular hotspot to come. Unfortunately we can only stay for coffee because we have a very busy schedule but it's a really nice place to come and check out. When I say I'm going to have a coffee, this is what I mean. Galleria dell'Accademia is home to Michelangelo's masterpiece, David. This iconic statue, carved from marble, is more than 17 feet tall and captures David in the moment before his battle with Goliath. The gallery also houses an impressive collection of Renaissance art, but honestly, other than David, there wasn't anything else that really caught our eye. So behind me is Ponte Vecchio, or Old Bridge as it's known, because it is the oldest bridge in Florence. Back in the day, it used to have a lot of shops selling meat and other kind of foods, but the smell from these shops were really permeating the corridor. So the king said that he only wanted to have jewelers selling on this bridge, and that's still the way that it is to this day. And when you walk through, it's super busy, but it's a really charming little area. It reminds me a little bit of the Gold Souk in Dubai. If you've been, you would know what I mean and it's a lovely little area to go and explore. We're trying to take some takes there on the, on the bridge, like overlooking Ponte Vecchio, but it was so busy. <laughs> we, all got, we got interrupted like every 30 seconds, so it was really hard to take it. But anyhow, we're gonna give the information about the bridge. Like, it's such an old bridge, with so much history, so much cool <laughs> things, like, and it's insane to, to see how a king or someone really important decides to change the rules and literally change the whole place. Uh, it's really cool, it's really interesting to, to really crisp and understand the history, how things uh, were created so long ago and shaped the world today. If you guys like pasta then I think we could be friends because we are doing another pasta restaurant today. This one is specialized in spaghetti. It's the Spaghetteria Fratelli and I'm really excited to go and try some very good pasta. I saw a Brazilian YouTuber going there like I think last year he said the pasta they have is amazing. So it's nice, it's nice to see us all something off, off side of the main center. Because sometimes you go to restaurants, they're all very tourist. I find the ones that are like really in those central locations like very overpriced as well. Like they kind of get overhyped because people don't spend the time to look for places that are out of the way a little bit. And that's always what I find you find the best places. We always like to show you guys a good mix between the must-try tourist spots as well as the lesser known local faves. Spaghetteria Fratelli definitely falls into the latter category, offering a true Italian experience. The atmosphere was alive with families and old friends gathering on a Sunday, and we were sure to try some new flavors, whether we ended up liking them or not. Our first dish was a type of fried polenta, but I found it way too salty and not crispy enough. We ordered two pasta dishes, and while mine was heavy and a bit on the bland side, Paolo ordered the restaurant's signature, which was simple in the best way possible and incredibly fresh. So they gave us some uh, free limoncello. 
Salut. 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 I just finished the lunch here at Spaghetteria Fratelle. So they gave us some limoncello for the Not just a glass, they gave us the rest of the bottle. The whole bottle, keep drinking and go and... No limitations. What I'd have two glasses of wine, but such a cool place. We, I had a really, really nice pasta. The other dish that we chose... We're just happy. I like a light uh, pasta, I like a thin pasta. It's one of those very, like, starchy, thick... Yeah, the tortellini was a bit heavy, but the other pasta is our pomodoro pasta, which is their signature, was amazing. The difference here is well, the portions are quite big, so like uh, the wine portions, and the yes. color portions, <laughs> everything is, is big. And the place here is very local, so it's also nice to like every other table here is uh, Italian. It's no so no even there's a, a group of uh, ladies here, like uh, <laughs> elderly ladies, like like really have their lunch, have a good time today. Yeah. Sun is so it's really nice. So. Now the sun is coming, which is nice. Uh, when it came here, it was a bit ready. Macchiato. See, it's a camera. So it's good, see? It's a good camera. <laughs> Café. Brazil. Brazil. <laughs> For me, one of the coolest things about Florence is that you can get served wine through a tiny door in the wall. Did you get your wine? Yeah. From what? From? From That's an crazy. Aperol window. In Italy, you have to drink an Aperol. These wine windows date back to Prohibition times, and there aren't many still in operation. But the best one we found was Osteria Belladon. At Vivoli, we came for the wine window and stayed for the much hyped Affogato. There aren't many coffees I'd queue this long for, but when I saw how many people were waiting to get their hands on this sweet treat, we knew we had to get involved. Thoughts? Oh. <laughs> worth the hour wait? It wasn't an hour. <laughs> Felt like an hour, but it was worth it. Yeah. Proper Italian Affogato. It's worth it, 100 percent We boil it al gelato. Very good. We're just about Hello. to head out for dinner now. Earlier we bumped into friends of ours who knew they were coming to Florence, so we planned to have dinner with them, but we actually bumped into them right in the square. And then we had a really nice afternoon just walking around. We got an Aperol and a wine from the wine window, which yeah. was a bucket list thing for this trip. I really wanted to get that done, so I'm very happy that we found one. Paolo and I are big on steak, so it was with much anticipation that we headed to one of the most hyped bistecca spots in Florence, Trattoria dell'Osti. Now, I don't know if we're just fussy or we got unlucky as the last order of the night, but this meat was average at best. Tough and chewy, we really weren't impressed. But before the night was over, there was one more thing we had to try. Didn't do it. Oh, uh, second time. <laughs> okay, second time, second time. Okay, same. Third time. Third time. <laughs> Oh! <laughs> okay, so what's that? So now just my, my wish won't come true. Come on. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> what magic trick did you do? It's just, just a good wish. <laughs> no, you have to be really gentle. You just let it go. Just let it go. Don't push it, just let it go. <laughs> trick. Just you let it go, let it go. I'm going to be very real with you guys. Our final morning in Florence did not go to plan. Paolo's allergies went off the scale and I headed out alone to climb the bell tower of the Duomo. Only, the tickets I'd bought online required me to meet a promoter who never actually showed up. But I guess that's the reality of travel sometimes. Things don't always go to plan. 
With only a couple of hours left, we headed to the number one sandwich spot in all of Italy. If you don't know Alantico Veneo, you're missing out. We first tried it in Milan and haven't been able to stop thinking about it since. They're known to have super long queues, so we made sure we were the first ones there when it opened, and it was so worth it. We have a long drive ahead to our next destination, so we actually ordered not one, not two, not three, but four sandwiches for the road. Florence for us was a whirlwind, full of more ups and downs than we could have predicted. We learned a lot about the challenges that come with visiting a new place with only 24 hours to spare. But I still feel we got to experience a lot of what makes this city special. From its vibrant art scene to the incredible food, I can definitely see myself coming back for more adventures. But for now, we're off to our next destination, and I really hope that you guys will join us there.